Welcome to the Modern Manifestation Podcast. I'm your host, Bree Brown, a business mindset coach, entrepreneur, and a top competitor in a male-dominated industry. I'm a native Texan, the youngest of all brothers, and a lettuce-hating, wine-loving, curses-like-a-sailor recovering perfectionist. I've spent over a decade building my commission-based career, and my life's purpose is helping other women achieve the same multi-six-figure success I achieved before I was 25. I have a passion for helping women with mindset, money, and manifestation skills to help every young woman realize her full potential. If you're looking for vulnerable conversations, professional development, inspiration, or even a kick in the ass to get you motivated, you have come to the right place. Thanks for checking out the Modern Manifestation Podcast. Now let's jump right in to today's topic. Hello, y'all. I hope you are doing wonderfully today whenever you are tuning in, whether it's Monday, Friday. Hope you're having a fantastic week. I am Brie Brown, creator of Modern Manifestation. And if you're new to the show, welcome, welcome. And for everyone else, thank you for continuing to join me in our weekly conversations about manifestation. Before we get into today's topic, I wanted to have a very self-deprecating moment for a hot sec and just a complete CYA, which if you don't know what that acronym stands for, it's a cover your ass moment. So I had someone that's tuning into my podcast and they sent me a little DM and were like, oh, I didn't realize that that was how that expression went. And I'm pretty sure it was like the going down the rabbit trail or the rabbit hole. And it's just just this moment for me where I was like, okay, people are starting to pick up on the fact that I cannot get any expression correct. So I felt the need to just tell you guys that now in the show in advance of the topic today. And that is that when it comes to colloquialisms, I always get them wrong. Always. Well, I I will say 95% of the time I get them wrong. So much so that my partner in life, Evan, who actually keeps a note on his phone of everything that I say wrong or incorrectly, (laughs) and it's really become just a hilarious thing between the two of us, but now that I have this podcast, it's so much more evident that I say so many things incorrectly in terms of just like, again, these colloquial terms. So I say stumped growth instead of stunted growth and color coated, like you put on a coat of color instead of coated. And there are so there's so many other phrases that I'm sure I'm just throwing into this podcast and you're probably tuning in and like, wait, what a minute? Is is that how you're supposed to say it? Go with your gut. You're probably right. And just give me the kindness of knowing that this is just one of my weird quirks and you know, if you do hear something, you're more than welcome to message me and tell me the correct way to say it. But there's also a really good chance I probably won't commit that to memory because so far it has been my partner's biggest struggle with me is trying to get me to use the right terms. And it's just a lost cause. And I have just accepted that this is a part of who I am. So I did not mean to go off a two minute tangent on that, but I just cracked up when I saw that someone sent me that message. I was like, okay, we got to address this because (laughs) this is just who I am, how I speak, and just as someone who comes from a family that didn't really use these terms, and I'm now trying to incorporate them as an adult, and I'm just very much going on audio and like what I'm hearing and not having read these terms. And so I'm just saying what comes to comes to fruition, and it might not always be correct. So I'll get off that soapbox now, but just I hope that you find that endearing and don't take that as any sort of sign of you're doing something or having said something incorrectly. So I just wanted to say that note and give you the confidence to know that you're probably correct. So we have talked about various tips and tricks to manifesting throughout this show, but there is one thing that I don't think we've touched on enough. And I know it's come up in some podcasts and some interviews or some other podcast episodes and some interviews, but I really wanted to make sure that we specifically touched on this and made it an entire episode in and of itself because it it is such an important topic. It needs to stand out on its own. And that is the art of letting go, releasing and not caring too much. This is the ultimate paradox about manifestation. Desiring enough to manifest, but not too much that you embody resistance. 
or that you come across as desperate. It's going to be a little bit of a mindfuck, I admit. And before I get too far into this, I want to make a clarification. I have seen a lot of people posting lately saying, I don't know how to manifest, or manifestation doesn't work for me, or how can I do this whole manifestation thing? (laughs) Manifestation is completely natural and instinctive. You are already manifesting whether or not you'd believe in manifestation or whether or not you're aware of manifestation. Manifestation is what happens as a result of your identity. And I can't say that enough. And so you are constantly, you're constantly manifesting all the time because your identity is a manifestation and you're continuing to manifest your identity. I know this sounds like a little bit of a catch-22. And the reason we talk about it and give it so much attention is to make you aware of how you're impacting what you're manifesting. So I love it when people say that they don't know how to manifest because I love to be like, hey, you already are. Whether or not you believe in this shit, your life is a manifestation. It is a reflection of what you've already manifested. And this allows, if you look at this right, it allows you to step out of victimhood and into owning your circumstances and pulling yourself up if that is what you need. No matter the trauma experiences, victimhood is a choice that is made. And it's a choice that's made every single day. So if you choose to play victim and live in that sort of mindset, you're choosing to live in resistance. You're not letting go. You are then cultivating this need to be a victim and you find reasons to and you find things to manifest that keeps you there. In my opinion, the ultimate resistance is playing victim because it's one of the lowest vibrations you can inhabit. And if you know someone in your life where they just constantly play victim, like things are always happening to me, life is happening to me, this fucked up thing happened, this fucked up thing happened, and then guess what else happened? This happened. Like, I feel like we all know those super negative people in our lives. Those are the ones that embrace this identity of being a victim And therefore, they are manifesting more reasons to be a victim. The universe is like, oh, great. Shitty things happen to you and you're a victim. I'll give you more of that. It doesn't give a shit what you're manifesting. It is your identity. And so if you want to be a victim and you want to play and own that role, you accept that vibration and find more reasons for that to manifest or the things you're trying to manifest. And so much of this is a simple mindset shift which can significantly impact your energetic level. So you can choose to be a victim or a creator. So as you think about manifestation, remember that this is something you're already doing. This is not necessarily a skill that needs to be learned. What we talk about on this podcast is just giving you tools to make manifestation work for you. But realize that it's something that you're doing anyway. But if you're looking for a Really what we're trying to talk about is is this concept of identity, and that's why I try to bring so many different topics to this show is because you are manifesting who you are and what you know, and a big part of that is if I can give you some tools and some things for you to know that might change your limiting beliefs, that might change how you go about perceiving the world, that is going to help you manifest. And for some people, having a certain amount of techniques or tools or whatever, even though that's not necessary for manifestation— If that's going to help you get in alignment and you into attunement in order to manifest, if you need that physical or that tangible thing to do in order to get yourself there, then that's why we're talking about these things. But it really starts with that identity. When it comes to manifesting, you can't out-manifest or out-visualize a crappy mindset or a crappy identity. You manifest who and what you are and the thoughts that you're having. You're always manifesting. Manifesting is a natural gift, and it's either worked for or against you based on your positive or your negative mindset. So real talk, be honest with yourself. Are you someone that life happens to, or are you someone that life happens for? Really think about that. And by the way, neither answer is wrong, and it's okay if you are someone that life happens to. It's up for you to decide whether or not that's something you want and whether or not that is something that you perceive as good or bad. No one else can tell you. If you are happy living in victimhood or if you are happy with life happening to you, then by all means, that is your prerogative in this world. It is your life. Do what you want with it. 
and don't let anyone tell you how your life needs to be. Including and especially me. Hell, I am just a Texan that can't even get common phrases right half the time. If I say something that doesn't resonate with you, to hell with it. Only absorb what feels true and right to you. Not easy, true. The good and the bad. And if you're wondering how to determine whether or not you view life as happening to or for you, think about some of these things. You know, are you complaining about circumstances to anyone that will listen? Or are you someone that makes the most of the things that have happened to you, even the shitty things that have happened to you? Are you someone that constantly compares yourself to the success of everyone else, saying, these people have all these things and yet I don't, why not me? Have a real conversation with yourself about this. Can everyone else have something that I can't? Is life so much better for everyone else but me? My life has been so shitty and it's going to continue being that way. If you have any statements or questions that sound like that, listen to it and just understand where it's coming from. And if any part of this triggers you, listen to that too. What part of you doesn't like this message and why? What part of you that is resisting what I'm telling you right now? What is that doing for you? How is that currently serving you in in everything that you've manifested so far? Sometimes those could be things that are protecting you even. And that's why we talk so much about limiting beliefs. Because a lot of times these beliefs have protected us in some way. And that's why we've allowed them to stay around. So you can choose to live life as a victim or a creator. But you cannot be both. So choose victimization or creation. And if you choose creator, you choose to believe that life is always working for you because that is your role as a creator, is creating the life that you want. And this life has been created based on your desires and your manifestation of your identity as a creator. That life will unfold for you exactly how it needs to, when it needs to, and that it may not always be how you think it needs to be. This is the art and message of today's episode. Letting go. Manifestation is not toxic positivity. I hate when people are like, I can't embrace these negative emotions or these feelings or have this guilt because that's going to keep me from manifesting. And then they get stressed about having those feelings. And if you've listened to my stress and overwhelm podcast episode, you'll know that that's not helping you manifest either. Manifestation does not require toxic positivity. And in fact, I would say toxic positivity does the opposite of what you're trying to manifest. That in and of itself is resistance. It's not running around pretending everything is fine while your damn house is on fire. That's not what this is about. Manifestation is accepting the good and the bad, the yin and the yang. It is knowing and trusting that everything is happening for a reason, the good and the bad, the positive and the negative. And as humans, we are intended to experience both. That is how we grow in this life. And if y'all are ready to get woo-woo with me for like a hot sec, if you believe in soul contracts and reincarnation, then you know that this is a life in which you're supposed to learn something from. You're supposed to be challenged in order to learn a series of lessons. And how those lessons show up to you is not your job to question. So let them go and stop resisting. The challenges you face, you get to either look at it from a perspective of how do I, where do I go from here and how do I pick myself up? Or you can dwell on the shittiness of that situation. But the choice is yours. Move forward or dwell. But that is going to impact your manifestation. Or what you're manifesting, I should say. You can manifest way more of the good by getting into alignment with it. By learning your lessons and letting go. And if you are resisting these lessons and these challenges... That also perpetuates that victimization because the challenge will keep showing up again and again until you learn the damn lesson. The universe is like, oh, don't get it the first time? Okay, here's the the same lesson you need to learn in another form. And it'll keep showing up until you learn from that what you need to. So that could show up in the form of your friend that keeps dating the same shitty guy. She hasn't learned that lesson. The universe keeps putting it in front of her until she learns something. It could be sticking up for herself. It could be recognizing a limiting belief she needs to work through. It could be any number of things. But until the lesson is learned, it will keep showing up. The same could be said for any part of your life, whether it's a job and you keep getting fired for some reason. What is the lesson that needs to be learned there? Maybe you keep losing money and you 
just can't seem to figure out why. What is the message or the lesson that you have not allowed yourself to learn? So if you are one of those people that has lived in this victim mindset, start to ask yourself, well, have I considered looking at these things from the perspective of how is this helping me or how is this serving me? And yes, it could be hard. Depending on what the trauma is that you experienced, this could be very, very difficult. And it can be very triggering. So be careful and gentle with yourself as you ask yourself, what is the repetitive thing that I keep seeing in my life? What keeps showing up in some form? Some forms won't be as severe and some might be very severe in terms of trauma. It just depends. Sometimes the universe is like, okay, well, that route didn't work. So let me try to teach them the same message, but with this other thing. Maybe it's with a relationship. And if it's not picked up there, okay, well, then let me try to teach them that, re- that same lesson with finances or your career or your health even. If you don't learn it in this life the way you're supposed to, it'll keep showing up. And that can also perpetuate that victim mindset because all of a sudden you're not willing to listen. You're not willing to let go, which allows you to learn. And so then you're just on this cycle of continuing to be that victim and then having things that show up in your life that keep you there because you're not letting go and you're in resistance. Anything that happens to you has a message or it allows you to impact someone else who needs you or needs that message. So accept what is as a part of life happening for you. And if you can begin to make that small mindset shift, you'll be transferring from being a victim to being a creator. You're saying, yes, these shitty things have happened to me, and they hurt. And it is what is because of something I needed to learn. And what do I do now? Where do I go from here? And things are continuously working in my favor. So what is next for me? What other lessons do I need to learn? And I feel like so many lessons the universe is trying to teach us really is about this art of letting go, which is why I really wanted to focus on this in today's episode. And this is a lesson I I learn constantly. I can't tell you how many times this keeps coming up for me. I mean, I am both a recovering perfectionist and a Virgo, so (laughs) with a moon in Capricorn, if you're really into all that. So letting go of control or the how something is going to happen is like asking me to jump off a cliff and just hoping someone secured me to a bungee jump or a harness or whatever those things are. It is a complete leap of faith, and it doesn't really make me feel super comfortable all the time. But it is a leap and a struggle that I want to make. And so instead of considering these things that are happening to me, I'm just like, you know what? It is what it is. I'm going to let go and just trust that things are going to happen in the way that they need to happen for me. Because manifestation requires you to become what it is that you want to manifest before you have it. Paradox. It requires that you set your intention and ask for what you want, but without asking too much. Paradox passionately knowing what your life is going to look like and trusting in it and then stepping into that and allowing the universe to work on your behalf but without being needy paradox this is the ultimate challenge most of us are going to run into with manifestation and it's not a lesson you can learn one time and then just poof you got it for the rest of your life this is one that will keep showing up for you and seeing how you respond this is having resistance of not letting go of not living in flow I know it's a really trendy topic to talk about. It's like being in flow. But seriously, guys, it's so fucking true. You got to let yourself let go and release that stress and that cortisol that's keeping you in resistance and just allowing to be what needs to be. And for me, this is and will always be one of the most counterintuitive aspects to manifestation. And it is a lesson that I need to revisit from time to time. Actually, it's probably not even like time to time. It's it's pretty frequent. I have to revisit this message for myself. And I think one of those challenges that I came into at one point, this one probably sticks out the most for me in terms of like letting go, not being in resistance, and just allowing to happen what's going to happen. And this was my wedding day. This is when I learned this lesson the first time and the most profoundly anyway, because like I said, you kind of learn these things over and over again as you forget them or need to reset. And I'm sure a lot of you can relate in some way because I don't know a single wedding story where there's some shit didn't happen on that same day. And like many weddings, the day of just started off with just a fair share of challenges. I had so many things that happened at one time. I had over 30 last minute guest cancellations just because of it being on a Friday and people having things come up at work or with family. I had 
the caterer had issues with the credit card and he was like, oh, by the way, we overbought on food and the credit card's not going through. And so we need to find someone to get to the store. And it was like way south of where we all were getting ready that day to come figure out the issue. My flowers weren't ready because my florist wrote down the wrong date for my wedding. And she thought my wedding was the weekend after. And so just figuring that shit out. My One of my bridesmaids' dresses did not fit them. Another bridesmaids forgot her shoes. We forgot the basket and the flowers for the flower girl. And the decorations weren't set up in advance because we had this quote-unquote wedding planner day of that was supposed to set everything up. And she just did not for whatever reason. People started eating the groom's cake like before the wedding even started, which it just like blew my mind that that was even something that people would think to do. And then the seating chart got disorganized by someone. And then my dad was almost late to walk me down the aisle. And then another bridesmaid was not feeling well and almost had to completely step out. It just felt like it was one thing after another. And I was just, I felt the stress building up in me because it's like you have this idea and expectation of how that day is going to go for yourself. And then all these things just start popping up that are completely outside of your control. And yet they feel so much like they have a direct impact on you. And thankfully, I was, I had a wonderful bridesmaid who was just extremely supportive of me. And she's just like, look, none of this shit matters. All that matters is that you and Evan commit yourselves to each other today. And I was like, this bitch is so fucking right. Nothing mattered that day except marrying my partner. And that was the most important thing. And it didn't matter if we didn't have fucking flowers or if my dad was late or if the cake was gone by the time we got to the reception. None of it mattered. I, you know, the only reason I remember some of this stuff now is because I'm telling you about it as a story and I had to go back and like recall some of the things that happened. But none of that mattered. And as soon as I had that moment of just like, you're right, it doesn't matter. All of this is going to be okay. This is something we're going to look back on and laugh at. And I just let go. And I was like, okay, it is what it is. I'm going to be late. It's fine. I don't even care anymore. And it's it's fine that we're that'll give people an opportunity that are, have hit traffic to to trickle on in. And I'm just going to get myself ready. I'm just going to relax. And I'm just going to let what needs to happen happen. And I, I released. And with that affirmation, I let everything go and I just surrendered. And when I did that, that very hour... of these problems were solved or somehow fixed miraculously. Even the flowers, like I don't, they even were telling us they didn't have the flowers ordered and I have no idea how they put these bouquets together. Were they perfect? No, but it was perfect for what we needed and it got the job done. And I mentioned this story because the biggest thing people forget to do when they're trying to manifest is this surrender part to allow the universe to take control and work for you. And if you find yourself so tightly trying to hold on to this control, you're not understanding why things aren't working out for you. Ask yourself how tightly wound you are. Are you letting the universe act on your behalf? It's all about stepping into that identity and knowing what you are and getting into that flow to release and live without resistance. And I know I sound like a broken record on this podcast episode, just talking about being in a flow, living without resistance, letting go, surrender. And I'm going to say it a million more times on other episodes as well, because This is so true for so many of us, especially my fellow recovering perfectionists out there. Most of us struggle with control. We want to have a say in the how or the what without having any idea of what is actually best for us. We have to be patient. We have to trust and we have to let go and know that what we want is coming. And most people say the things and have the thoughts and They write down, you know, their visualizations, exercise, and all that crap, which is great if that helps you then become the person that knows that that's coming to you. If that is a great way to convince your your inner self that those things are coming for you, then all of those things are great exercises for you to utilize to help you get into that place. But if you're doing those things and you're not actually believing in them, you're like, oh, okay, I'm going to write this shit down 55 times or whatever. And then you're like, but it's not really going to happen subconsciously then that whole 20-minute journaling exercise or affirmation exercise is not going to help you if that's the thought you still carry as you're going through that. And I think letting go can be a huge part of getting you to the right place. So you have to be patient, you have to trust, you have to let go. So yes, if this is what works for you, set an intention, give it positive energy, do the visualization exercises, do whatever technique helps you get into that flow and identity. But whatever you do, 
you need to make sure you let go of the how and you allow yourself to then get in flow. So whatever that technique needs to be for you to allow that to happen, for that resistance to to go away, to dissipate. And a big part of that is feeling safe and knowing that you can let go. And maybe that's not a message you were ever taught in life. Maybe you were taught that you have to absolutely control everything because otherwise shit's going to hit the fan and nothing's going to work out in your favor. If that's why you're so strongly holding on to control, that's resistance. That will keep you from manifesting because that is putting your need to control into overdrive. And so you need to sit with that and figure out why do I feel unsafe when I am not in control? Why do I feel as though I have to control in order to manifest? Am I worthy of manifesting what I want without making it happen for myself? There's an expression that I've I, that I actually avoided for so many years because of my own trauma around religion, specifically Christianity, which is how I was raised and really what I bra- embraced for a long time. And I'm really glad that I've, I've worked to heal a lot of that trauma because there is such a beautiful phrase and there's so much truth in it. And I've, I've had to relearn to accept this phrase. It is a really great phrase to embody knowing that you're coming from a completely spiritual place and not necessarily religious, if that's a trauma for you also. And that phrase is, let go and let God. And if there were a catchier version of replacing God with something else, I would give it to you, but I haven't found that yet. So, you know, let go, let God, let go, let the universe, let go, let spirit, uh, maybe let go, let love. Ooh, I actually really like that. Let go, let love. We're going to go with that. That's going to be my new thing. Let go and let love. And you can use love to embody that spirit of essence, of God, of universe, whatever that is for you. Too many of us struggle to manifest what we want because we care too damn much. We can't let go. We won't let God or we won't let love. We won't allow ourselves to live in love. So that is the giant paradox. You want, but you want too much. You have to want it, but not desperately. You have to ask for what you want, see it, feel it, give it energy, become it. But then you have to let go, walk away, and know that the universe is working on that for you. I've said this in other podcast episodes, do not micromanage the universe. If you've been going through manifestation practices and you're not making headway, ask yourself if you've really let go and released knowing that it is coming. Desperation, neediness, all of this is a different version of scarcity. And the universe is going to interpret this energy as lack, negativity, begging. And we imagine having a friend that comes to you and they're just like, would you please just come and hang out with me? It's been so long. I feel like you never listened to me. Will you please just come on, come over, come over. Hey, can you have a quick call? Can you text me? Hey, I noticed you're not responding. I'm just curious if you got my message. I'm going to send you an email just in case. And like, maybe I'll stop by later because I, I hadn't heard back from you. And when I told you what I wanted, it's been at least, you know, a few days and I still haven't heard from you. So I'm just going to go ahead and drop on by. I hope that's okay. Like how desperate and needy does that energy feel? Imagine having a friend that, and then then people wonder why they can't manifest what they want. It's like they ask for something from the universe, and instead of feeling it and knowing that it's coming and releasing and letting go, they follow up with the universe over and over and over again. They're like, oh, well, let me visualize on it too, and I'm going to write it down, and I'm going to say it out loud, and I'm going to repeat this every single morning because I don't think the universe is getting it. These practices are great, but if you're overdoing it and coming from a place of desperation— that's the difference. What is the energy behind it? Is it is it an energy of knowing like I'm just reaffirming this to myself because it, it feels good and it's that burst of positivity every morning of just knowing that I live so abundantly? Or is it I feel like if I don't do this, then it's not going to actually manifest and I'm scared. So I'm going to do this every single day and make sure that the universe hears my message loud and clear. <laughs> do, you, do you tell the difference? Ask yourself, how are you really doing those things in the morning? Is it from that place of knowing and abundance, or is it from that place of fear and desperation? That makes all the fucking difference. And this is why we talk about acting as if. You take on the identity of someone who already has what it is that you're asking for, because then you don't need to micromanage. You just know that whatever it is is coming, and you just walk with that confidence until it actually does or it actually manifests. Too much desire is scarcity. Too much desire is desperation. 
And there is a fine balance for manifesting what you want. So that is my lesson for you today. I won't keep beating you in the head with it, but it is so important. Let go, allow, get in the flow so that you are not in resistance. You can always ask yourself that question if you're wondering why something has not manifested for you that you've been trying to manifest. Have a fantastic rest of your week. And if you have any topics that you really want covered or that you have questions about, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram or Facebook at Modern Manifestation and let me know what is on your mind. You could also send me an email to hello at the, T-H-E, modernmanifestation.com and mention anything about these episodes, ask additional questions or clarity. If you have a particular situation where you'd like a little bit more insight, feel free to reach out and I will make time to get to you sometime throughout the week. And if you are enjoying these episodes, I would really appreciate your sharing these with friends and family who might enjoy the same lessons. Y'all have a fantastic rest of your week, and I will catch y'all next Monday. Until then, go out there and manifest some miracles. Thank y'all so much for hanging out with me today. If you enjoyed this podcast, hit subscribe so you can stay up to date with new episodes. As always, we would love it if you would share this episode with friends and family who could use the inspiration. As a new podcast show, we would really appreciate your honest feedback so I know what you like and what you could use more of. As a thank you for leaving us a rating, we will send you our seven weekly tips to create space for abundance. Make sure you screenshot your review and email it to us at hello at the T-H-E modern manifestation.com so we can send them straight to your inbox. If you'd like to stay connected, you can find us on Instagram or Facebook at Modern Manifestation. Or you can head to our website at themodernmanifestation.com. Thanks again for joining me, and I will catch y'all in the next episode.